Hey, it's Julio Ricardo Varela here for Latino Rebels Live. We're here on set and we're gonna have a great show. Fabulous conversation coming up. So sit back, relax. Latino Rebels Live from Los Angeles. Let's do it. Before we start the show, we have to introduce my fabulous co-host, Melina Tatiana Bobadilla Chavez. That's right. We're using four names today. He has three. <laughs> I wanted to one-up you. Thank you so much. My family thinks you. Oh, I'm very <laughs> glad that I've, I've, you know, I've maintained like, like la tradición, yeah. la herencia. So Thank I, you. that's a big little check mark for me. So muchas gracias. So the last time I saw you, like in human form. In, yeah, it was in on person. a screen. Oh. In yeah, that's screen. right. Like when we were doing the show last year during the quarantine. Right. I would, I would, you know. So we are we're real. like this. We're, we're real. We're, we're real. Should we? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Um, so <laughs> three days. This is pretty exciting. This right? is really exciting to have come from seeing each other on a pixelated, kind of sometimes stalling yeah. Facebook live screen to this with a studio with like a full Hollywood crew and lights and makeup artists. Like <laughs> this is a level we needed to be at. This is what the people wanted. They, you, they, I think. I, we actually got the comments and we said, you know, Melina needs this amazing dress and you look fabulous. You look fantastic. Thank you. So tell me, um, you know, you've been busy. I've been very busy. So you, I mean, I can tell you what people, I want to know what you've been doing. I, I kind of know, but I want to make you sure. Know, I, I love, I love the, uh, <laughs> the build up, right? Like um, let's, let's dangle it. Uh, so, I think what you're referring to, which just, it's the most current exciting thing. Yes. I shot a new recurring char character for Hentified on Netflix, season two. Season two. Yes, written by the amazing uh, Marvin Limas and Linda Yvette Chavez, who are my dear friends, and uh, executive produced by America Ferreira. It was a whole new experience shooting something during a pandemic, yeah. um, having to deal with masks, uh, not just one mask, two masks, and then COVID compliance officers, right, right. you know, and I have the tendency to be like, you know, to revert to be, my my yeah, high school self yeah, if I exactly. get too many rules thrown on me. Yeah, because you're so relaxed. <laughs> like you, you, I am. I'm, I mean, <laughs> depends on the day. But it was an amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, now it's nice that it's out in the world and I can actually talk about it and I don't have to be vague about my character. So I play Melina Barragan. Yes, her name is also Melina. Two, and two, two names. <laughs> yeah, she only has two. She is an immigration attorney. Oh, and nice. she has been brought into the mix to represent Pop, um, Casimiro Mora Morales, AKA Joaquin one of my, Cosio. My fave, my fave character in season yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, so. literally one of my favorite actors so I'm, of I'm all into time. So I'm season yeah. two, you know, but so you love it. So, so I like, loved it, I had a great time, and I have to say that there was something so rewarding and satisfying and uh, really meaningful to play someone that was close to me. I mean, she is a Chicana. Yeah. She is smart and witty and frazzled. And um, I would say that I am all those things. Smart, witty, smart worthy, frazzled. I, 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 I don't want to say fra <laughs> like frazzled, but a good, no, a good, no, good sense like of frazzled. Like high energy, always busy. Good frazzled. People say like, you know, hashtag booked and busy. I say I'm booked and busy. But like, I gotta be honest, I got a side of anxiety with that, you know? Like I enjoy my downtime and especially, you know, yeah. coming out of quarantine, it's like, it was a slower pace, but uh, she's just amazing. She's a, a three-dimensional character. Um, you know, you see her be a legal badass. Nice. And then there's a moment that I don't want to spoil it for people that haven't no, seen yet that are- don't spoil it. Where you really get a sense of her humanity. And yeah. um, it was just an honor to play her because they're, are not a ton of roles like that out right. there for roles like, brown girls like roles me. Roles that, yeah, brown girls like you that kind of, that's your experience. Right. Like, the, I think from, you know, looking at your career, like oh, this is, in, you know, this uh, is like inside the actors. Looking back at your career, Melina, Tatiana Bobo, Yes, yeah, look at my Chavez, IDMDB. Um, yes. I mean, this was a character that, I mean, I've seen you play other roles, and this was, this role that you played, yeah. was, I was like, oh, that's Melina. Right. Like, Whereas, honest. And, and not that the other roles that you haven't done, because you've, you've done really great work, but if this role felt different for yeah. you, right? It, it, it felt uh, like, a, like an extension, mm. uh, spiritually, you know. Fue una experiencia religiosa, to quote um, one of your favorite singers, right? Uh, who's one of my Is favorite singers? Is that not Luis Miguel? 
Oh yeah, we're bringing. Oh, I don't know. Sorry, I'm, mix, in, you I'm mixing up my my Latin American problematic pop references. Okay, we don't have to talk about Luis Miguel. But I, I wasn't planning on it. <laughs> no, uh, what's his name? Enrique Iglesias. Oh, okay. That oh, one. Okay. Anyway, uh, we can cut that if you guys want. <laughs> but um, no, really, it, it was it was so meaningful, and yeah. and so, my sister said something interesting. I, she's actually the the critic and the judge that I care most about yeah. because she will just tell me directly and. She's known me my whole life, so she's seen me in other roles, and she's like, I know all your facial expressions, and um, you know, this one was this and that was that. When she saw this, she was emotional because she's like, you're talking like you. That's you're nice. not putting on an accent, nice. you know, you're not uh, stepping into a stereotype, and as actors, you know, we still gotta put food on the table, yeah. and we gotta get our names out there and build our career, and I will say, I've been grateful for every single role that I've gotten. Right. And it's brought me to where I am today. Um, but when we talk, <laughs> you know, we got to do a whole show about this. When we talk about Latina, Latinx representation overall, there are some roles that we are overrepresented in. Oh, I, absolutely. And I've had a hard time trying more, to convey. Yeah, we need more Melina yeah. characters. But listen, we can have that, that conversation yeah. some Episode other time. Two? Yeah, or when ten? we come back and when we do yeah. live. But you ready for our, our guest? So, Julio, yes, I am ready to introduce <laughs> our guest. <laughs> No, but really, I'm very excited to have our next guest. I'm so happy to be in conversation with her. She is a creative who wears many hats. She is an actress, a writer, a producer, a director. She's an advocate. You probably saw her on HBO's Generation and also a slew of other uh, independent films throughout the film festival circuit. Please welcome Nava Mao. Hello, Nava. Hi. It's so nice to have you here. You look beautiful. You look amazing. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, yes. So so, as I mentioned in the introduction, you wear many creative hats, and, and I think I, that's so admirable because I wear a few less hats. <laughs> and my, my stack of hats is not as big. So, I just, I want to know what it's like blending your artistry when you are writing, you are directing, you are acting. Tell us about that creative journey and how you got started into it. Um, well, I mean, it's been a while since I was writing, directing, and acting mm -hmm. on the same project. Um, and after having done that, I definitely um, am much more aware of how difficult that can yeah, be. Yeah. And, um, and I, I think it only makes sense for certain roles and certain projects. Yeah. Um, but what I, what I really like about this work that I get to do now is, is being able to collaborate with people. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, as much as I I have the stories that I want to tell and I love to play characters, I also really like to just support somebody mm. else's vision. Mm. Nice. Um, so I feel like the different roles allow for that. Right. And um, I don't know that I was expecting to produce as many independent projects as I ended up mm -hmm. working on, um, but I, it was just, if if the story speaks to me, I, I I I like to find a way to be a part of it, whether that is writing, producing, directing, so cool, acting. Right? So, yeah. and in terms of these stories that speak to you, right? Because that ultimately is what uh, attaches you to a project, right? Yeah. And and allows it to really come from an authentic place. What kind of stories um, have you been most connected to, and and what are stories that you think you kind of want to um, mm. collaborate on? When I, when I first decided, okay, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna start working in film, yeah. I, I wanted to tell stories about people who most of the world maybe wouldn't recognize mm -hmm. um, from their own personal lives. I think over the past few years, what I've discovered is that a great way to do that is to meet people in intimate situations mm -hmm. um, and to meet people within intimate relationships. Um, and so that has been kind of like a thread and it was not my plan, but, um, but I think it, it just, there's just something about looking at what happens when we're close to somebody mm -hmm. and we have to be so open and so vulnerable um, when we're dealing with a lot of compounding um, issues that affect people. Um, I'm talking about different oppressions, I'm talking about um, the way our society is structured. Yeah. I think all of that affects our relationships mm -hmm. and it affects how we relate to people. So, 
Um, so that has kind of been yeah. The, yeah. the thread. I hope it's not too... Oh, I love no, it. No, no, yes. because I picked up on one thing. Yeah. One of the things that feels counterintuitive as a creator, what you said, and, and I kind of latched onto it, is sort of supporting others in this, mm. right? Because I think right. we get all caught up in, ah, I got to do my hustle, and this is me, and here's, you know, I got to be on brand mm. and all that. So talk to me about that feeling of supporting others, because I actually think from a creative standpoint, for people that are doing this, could be incredibly gratifying and kind of give you that perspective of like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do this, but then maybe I'll go write something on my own because that person has inspired me. So how, how do you feel when you say like, I am gonna support and like mm. not forget where you come from like that? Because I think we don't ask ourselves that question mm. a lot. Mm. Um, so like, how do I feel when Yeah, I when you support someone, like yeah, it's like, a, because yeah. it, it's counterintuitive, you're supposed to like, be competitive. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, you know, for I me, say okay. that's rare. And yeah, crea that's creatively, rare. like yeah. I, you know, I take Latino Rebels. Like we created it like ten years ago, and I actually welcome a lot of outlets that kind of follow our vibe because okay. it in increases yeah. the the atmosphere, you know, yeah. the, the universe, and it, it proves the point that it's like, yeah, this works. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was yeah. just curious, like when you when you say like I am going to produce someone else, it's not my story, but I feel connected to mm -hmm. it. How do you feel? Like, does it? Does it inspire you to do other things or? I mean, I really believe in the power of storytelling and the power of media to create change in individual people's lives. But I also believe in its power to create culture change. Yeah. And so I, I mean, there's no motivation like understanding all the ways that our society needs to change in order to be a better place for everybody to live in and we're in this state within the film and television world where people are finally realizing that we have to make some serious changes and we yeah. have to really change the yeah. kinds of people yeah. that are invited to Absolutely. to share their yeah. stories. Absolutely. And so that is black and brown people, that is queer and trans people, that is women and non-binary people, yeah. um, people who deal with disabilities, um, the list goes on and and so, any time that a story like that, you know, comes my way, it, it speaks to me. Um, and, and I think I've just been very lucky to meet people who they feel a, a real passion mm -hmm. for, for telling a certain story. Um, like this uh, short film that I uh, recently worked on with my friend April Maxi. Um, who's also from San Antonio. Hey, um, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, even though we never met in San Antonio. But, um, uh, you know, it's about a queer Chicana who's going through a breakup and she rediscovers herself and she rediscovers an old flame by going back to work at an underground lap dance party. Ooh, um, there you go. And so I think, right, yeah. like in a short yeah. film, you have like like that, you pack in so many layers of identity and so many layers of experience that it would feel wrong to ignore a story like that. Right. Mm. And so I just, I just have to, you I love know? It. I don't You're know. Just I don't know. It comes from it. a very real yeah. place. Yeah. I and I have to, to say that yeah. like, just listening to you speak right now, I would. I don't know if you saw the change in my posture. I was like smiling yeah, and I, I think almost like I think exhaled. One of your hats like came on. <laughs> like, I, I was like, should I put on another hat? No, but honestly, being someone that is also in this industry, that is a Chicana actress, I find myself yearning for more of these types of conversations and connections yeah. because it's very clear that your work comes from, from, a, from being really mission driven. There is a purpose there, there is a humanity and that, it's that I want and, more and, and, of. And, and like right. we're taught that it's, it's counter, it's not about you have to be commercial, you have to be mainstream, yeah. you have to be hit. And, you know, that, and I think no right. one's having, like these conversations have to happen more and more. Right. right, and as you said, because we, it's absolutely imperative that we start ushering in the change that we see hashtagged and the change that we see, you know, maybe it'll get a month or a day of recognition on Twitter a year, but it's like, how do we walk the walk beyond just talking yeah. the talk? And yeah. I think you do that and, and talk, you know, I wanna ask you specifically because you're so, rare, your, your spirit and your energy is so rare in this industry. What is it like making that bridge, you know, and if you could tell us a little bit about the character that you brought to life on, on Generation, because I absolutely fell in love with her. Um, I think that is actually one of the most what, powerful yeah. and, and heart-centered characters that I've seen. Like, 
I want to be her friend. Um, I want to know her and just you know tell us a little bit about her because I don't think anyone else could have given her that yeah. corazón. I mean that, that you is, did. That is so sweet. I'm so flattered. No, I, love her. Um, I, I, I do. I gotta say, like that the the vision and mission that I have in my work, it's it's a goal, mm -hmm. and I I feel sometimes very hesitant to to claim that I'm walking any kind of walk mm. because I really am just figuring it out. Yeah, and I've been very grateful that people such as you know yourselves have have been willing to take me seriously. But I really still feel like I'm just getting started, and 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 I'm I'm trying to to learn how to make it work and how mm -hmm. to create those bridges. Um, and I think the one of the lessons for me in the past couple of years has been to just do one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Nice, um, that's a good lesson. And um, and so with with playing Anna on, on Generation, I, I I really took it as an opportunity to grow in in my acting specifically um, because I didn't write on the show um, because I didn't originate the character and and then TV is interesting where you don't have necessarily an end point mm -hmm. you have to meet the character in the moment mm -hmm. right. Um, and so it felt like my responsibility to bring in her history um, and to bring in a kind of cultural and community understanding of, of where she lived. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I didn't know exactly what to do. Can you tell us about her? But, like, um, who is she to you? Right. Um, That's a good question. She, I like that. she taught me so much. Um, I. I felt like I didn't really know who she was when I first read the scripts and I was like, I felt really challenged mm. um, because she, you know, she ha used to do drag. Um, her immigrant story is very different. Like I was born in Mexico, but my mom's American. Mm -hmm. You know, when I moved to the U.S., it wasn't that same story. Um, and, and I just had to figure a lot of things about, OK, well, how does this person exist in the world? Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I really found was that her power was fearlessness. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I tend to be very yeah. um, careful, <laughs> you know, and-, and, and <laughs> So it was I, like different from, from your own, like, yes, like being yes, fearless? Yeah, like, so she, did that freak you out a little bit? Um, yeah, because I felt like I didn't know exactly how to how to just be so big and so bold mm. and, and to move so quickly. You know, the, like, this is I'm saying that talking about magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's an act. Um, but I know like, what you're saying. It's yeah. like yeah, once you're uncomfortable, like, but that's what yeah. Yeah, she's so snappy and So like, what what was your anchor to make that happen? Because you when you what made you feel like, ah, I mm. got it. Here's the connection. Here's the connection. Um I, so when I used to live in Oakland, I worked um, as a counselor with survivors of violence. And so um, as part of that job, I worked with this group of trans Latina immigrant women. Mm -hmm. And I got to know them over the years. And, and that's when it clicked for me, mm. when, I, when I remembered them. And, and I just, you know, I just, I thought about what it must have been like for them walking through the world every single day. Um, and I thought about their spirit and their determination to thrive and their openness. You know, this is a harsh world and it, it, is, it is very harsh for um, people who carry extra burdens in their identity. Um, so I really thought back to that, to that spirit and that determination. Um, and that's what I found in Anna was, was that can't nobody take her down. Yeah. Never. That came through a hundred percent. You know, and seeing you be emotional right now, it makes me emotional, and I and I and I feel your energy because, but I I, I felt it watching you because I got that you anchored her in this dignity, mm. and you gave her those layers of spirit, and there's this word that's used so often it's becoming cliche like unapologetic, but what does that mean? It's I really saw her standing in her truth knowing who she was and and i think it, it there's an element of self love there um and, and fear, because, yeah, uh, yeah and the, the fearless like when you take on unapologetic but i love when you said fearlessness because it is almost like a lot more of a loving word where it's like right. you're taking that 
chance, right? And it's, I, I love, I mean, from a creative standpoint, I mean, I love that you discovered your fear and your challenge yeah. and, you, and you confronted it. Yes. And then you went back to your past because you, you do have this advocate past before and like that acting really is about life experiences and, and you might not know that until you know it, right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. so, so has it made you, how has that experience made, like shaped you more then in terms of made you grow? Because very wise comments there coming, you know, <laughs> I, I love what you were saying. Um, I hope I'm making sense. You're no, making you absolute, absolute sense. Like, I'm um, like, I, I, just yeah. I was like, I was like, Keep going. I know. Uh, I'm like, I'm taking me to church right now. I know, seriously. Me. Like, <laughs> so, um, I, I, so I think that being trans also makes you have to be very aware of, of how you operate in any given space um, and hyper aware of the, the risk of violence. Um, hyper aware of rejection from from people who you might think respected you or might um, not have expected them to to treat you that way, and so I think that, that might be some of where my being careful comes from. Mm. Um, and I, I think in playing Anna, I also was reminded of when I was younger. Mm. And I was not so afraid. And I think I was in mm. environments that were more contained. Um, and I, and I, I, I just had to tap into that um, that risk mm. that the that risk wow. can pay off. Because I think we can get stuck in thinking that risk inevitably will will bring danger. Yeah. But yeah. what happens mm. if it pays off? Being what happens that. if it sets you free, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, and, and I've, I really have tried to lean into that more, um, and just be, just be more yeah. free, yeah, good, you know, good for you. So this is the time in the show where you get to plug you and what you do in your portfolios and where can people find more about you because, you know, and I don't want you to be shy or like, um. and brag about your work. <laughs> This is a moment. Tell our audience, like, you know, what, what, where can people find you? Learn more about you. Um, well, I have a website. It's navamal.com. Um, and you can watch my short film, Waking Hour, on the site. Um, and then it has all the links. You know, the Instagram is my name. And all the things, all yeah, the um, Twitter is Miss Navamal. You know, that's, that's right. Miss Navamal. Miss <laughs> okay. Jackson, if you're nasty. If you're that way, but it's all good. Um, and yeah, TikTok too. I'm trying to do TikTok. Okay. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I would say yeah. don't count on the social media accounts being there because mm. honestly, I might delete them any moment. Could be oh, talking about the liberation. Oh my god. I think goodness. it's, you know, it's interesting to hear like creatives such as yourself, especially in this industry, saying, you know what, eh, social media, like, eh, I don't know, but. Um, Nava, thanks for being on with Thank us. Thank you so much this for having me. Really, like, I could talk wonderful. to you for hours. This is like an it's like all of a sudden we had like, like the, the Latinx inside the actor studio. All of a sudden, this is what it turned. No, no, I loved this it. Is like, oh I loved it. A rare gift. Oh my god. And I, I just, I'm so excited um, because I've been a fan. Obviously, you know, we connected on Instagram. Uh, so there are small moments when, when the the gram and, and it, when real connection be made. But I don't. I think it comes down to who you are as a person Absolutely. and your spirit. And the shining. And, and we're, um, we're so yeah. happy that you, you've joined us and we'll hope to have you back someday. Thank you keep so us, much. Keep us, yes. keep and us you said you like collaborating, so you There know. we go. <laughs> you Nava heard it here first, maybe. Thank you for being on. Yes. So, Melina, yeah. Nava, I mean, first of all, congratulations. You pitched her as the first guest of this series that we're doing. What are your thoughts? What did what, what she share that? I mean, you felt, I mean, I, yeah, I, was I getting felt chills, you like connecting. Teary. You know, my posture got better. My skin's already clear, but it got clearer. No, but really like, I appreciate Nava so much because she stands in her truth. Yeah. And she's so lovely and graceful about it. And there's a light about people that just exist in that authenticity. Um, highly recommend, encourage you immediately after you finish watching us. Go check out her beautiful work as Anna right. on Generation HBO. She's really the standout for me. I'm like, that's one of my favorite characters and she brought it to life. Um, check out her short films. Uh, you can follow her on social media 
I want to see more of her. When we talk about the directions that Hollywood needs to be in, I want to see more performers yeah. like Nava. Yeah, and I think like w that's what I got out of it. First of all, I, I I'm kind of glad I asked her that question about like the anchor because I think it really opened up like as a creator, as an actor, like your life experiences actually influence your performance and your craft. Right. And sometimes you might not have a character. You're like, well, I'm not like this character, but you really are. So I really thought that was. I just love when actors open up to talk about their. Yeah, we had a bit of an actor studio moment. I know. I, was I like, appreciate. Was I like it. The, the pompous like dude that used James Lipton? Was I like James Lipton? <laughs> Hello, you two no, young <laughs> Latina women. <laughs> Welcome to the actor studio. Uh, he probably would have called us Hispanic. Oh, Hispanic. Sorry, uh, spicy Spanish oh, girls. Oh gosh. But uh, <laughs> you know that's why uh, Oprah Magazine called you a curious journalist. Well, thank you, thank you for that plug. But listen, <laughs> um, we're wrapping up another show. Thank you, Melina, for being with me tonight. Thank you, Julio, for being in my city. No, but really, in all seriousness, thank you for inviting me to chat. Uh, I think we had a good thing going here. Yeah, no, it's, we're yeah, going to keep, a little East Coast, keep West going. Coast. East Coast, West Coast. So we will be back the next time. Thank you again for supporting Latino Rebels Alive, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>